As the first rays of dawn kissed the horizon, our journey began in Karatu, Tanzania. The air was cool and the world around us was still just starting its morning routines. As we ventured forward, the landscape unfolded before us like a canvas of life. Along the way, we passed by humble houses with single solar lights like beacons in the distance. The landscape was a patchwork quilt of farmlands where rows upon rows of onions and other crops stretched out into the distance. As we continued our journey, we encountered young children diligently tending to their donkeys. These young shepherds with their watchful eyes and unwavering commitment exemplified the age-old traditions and way of life that had been passed down through generations. Our early morning adventure was a testament to the beauty and simplicity of life in this corner of Tanzania. As we left behind the dusty roads and entered the heart of the Hadza people, our destination was the remote and enigmatic Hadzabi tribe, a group of people whose way of life had remained largely unchanged for centuries. Our arrival, greetings were exchanged in a language as ancient as the land itself, a language that connected us to the very essence of this unique community. With remarkable skill, the hunters prepared their wooden arrows, using their teeth to straighten them to perfection. Each arrow was a testament to their craftsmanship and their intimate knowledge of the materials that surround them. It was in these small everyday actions that we witnessed the profound connection between the Hadzabi and the natural world that sustained them. Our adventure was on the verge of unfolding and a sense of anticipation filled the air. We knew we were about to witness a way of life that very few people experience. We were about to embark on a journey into the heart of the Hadzabi way of life, where ancient traditions, survival skills, and a deep reverence for the land would guide our exploration. The Hadzabi hunters wasted no time. With a swiftness born of generations of experience, they set out on a fast-paced journey, and we were expected to keep pace as well. Through the undergrowth, we followed their lead, navigating the winding pathways and pushing through thickets and bushes. The hunters moved with a fluidity that spoke of an innate connection to this rugged terrain, effortlessly weaving their way through the wilderness. The first catch of the day was a bird, swiftly and skillfully taken down by one of the hunters. Though this may be a bit of a challenge to see in real time, their hunting skills are quite remarkable. Our guide, Saadi, introduced us to the dark red berries of the Salvatore tree, a tree deeply intertwined with the Hadzabi way of life. These berries, with their unique appearance and pepper-like taste, were a surprising and delightful addition to our culinary adventure. The berries had a subtle spiciness reminiscent of pepper, but they were also tinged with a hint of sweetness, creating a flavor profile that was both unique and utterly delicious. As we explored further with the Hadzabi hunters, we encountered more members of their community that, that were along for the hunt. Their faces were lit up with excitement, and it was clear they had spotted something intriguing. Their keen eyes had caught sight of a small mouse skittering about in the dirt. One of the hunters with his bow and arrow at the ready positioned himself near the hole they had dug. With the unwavering focus of a seasoned expert, he patiently waited for the right moment. Then in a swift and precise motion, he used his bow and arrow to remove the mouse from its hiding place. It was a display of incredible skill, showcasing their ability to turn the simplest of tools into effective hunting instruments. As the mouse was brought out in the open, one of the hunters couldn't contain his excitement. He began to use the traditional clicking vocabulary. The clicks and sounds he produced were a celebration of their successful capture, a testament to the deep connection between their culture and the natural world around them. In that moment, we were not only witnesses to a successful hunt, but participants in an age-old tradition. The Hadzabi's ability to thrive in their environment using their ancestral knowledge and skills left a lasting impression on us. It was a reminder of the importance of preserving and celebrating the diverse cultures and traditions that enrich our world. Next, they skillfully carved the notch out of a small branch, fashioning it into a key component for creating friction. They carry a fire starting stick with them along with their arrows, creating a rudimentary yet effective fire starting tool, highlighting the ability to thrive in a world where modern conveniences were non existent. With swift, rhythmic movements, they applied the stick to the notch in the branch, creating friction that gradually produced a wisp of hot charcoal on top of the knife that laid below the stick. Their efforts intensified, and soon the sparks ignited the tinder as they blew on it. The small flame that emerged symbolized their mastery of fire making, but also their deep connection to the natural world. With the fire ablaze, they slowly added tinder and sticks, and soon it was time to cook the bird and the mouse. I 
wako tog my daughter Amanda with her youthful curiosity was the first to dive in she eagerly picked up a morsel and took a bite her eyes widening with delight and she said it tastes like chicken it was a moment of culinary exploration that transcended borders and, and cultures a testament to the power of food that connects us all Much to our surprise, as we made our way back to the Hadzabi village, we were greeted with an unexpected treat. A wild boar that had been prepared for us to taste. The aroma of the freshly cooked boar hung in the air. The flavor profile was unlike anything we had experienced before. It had a depth that hinted at the wildness of the animal and the untamed nature of the environment from which it came. There was a subtle gamey quality to the meat, a reminder that this was a creature of the wilderness, free to roam and feed on the bounty of the land. As we savored each bite, we couldn't help but be moved by the generosity of our hosts. They had not only shared their hunting skills and culinary traditions with us, but it also offered us a taste of the very heart and soul of their culture. <laughs> with a sense of camaraderie and excitement, we were asked to share our own skills with them, specifically our abilities with the bow and arrow. So we picked up the traditional Hadzabi hunting tools. We couldn't help but feel a mixture of awkwardness and humility. <clears throat> These tools were an extension of their very identity, crafted and honed over generations. Under the watchful eyes of the Hadzabi, we attempted to draw the bow and aim at the distant targets they had set up. It quickly became apparent that our efforts were met with varying degrees of success. The Hadzabi found their marks with precision and consistency, hitting targets far more frequently than our attempts. <laughs> the wind. <laughs> After our days spent with the Hadzabi tribe, it was time to engage in some cultural exchange of a different kind, negotiations for items from their store. The Hadzabi had a unique way of crafting and fashioning items from natural materials found in their environment, each item infused with their cultural significance and history. Among the items that caught our attention were the distinctive bells that the chief wore on his ankle. These bells were not just decorative, they held a special place in the Hadzabi tradition, often used for dance and other ceremonies. As we initiated a brief negotiation, it became very clear that these bells were a prized possession. However, after a respectful exchange, I had the privilege of acquiring them. Each delicate jingle reminded of the vibrant culture we had countered. In addition to the bells, we also purchased arrows and small child-sized bows. These items, handcrafted with care and precision, were not only beautiful but also practical, serving as a tangible reminder of our day with the Hadzabi. As our time with the Hadzabi tribe drew to a close, they treated us to a spirited display of their cultural heritage through two traditional dances. These performances were a fitting farewell. With each step and gesture, they conveyed stories of their ancestors, their connection to the earth and the animals they revered as kin. It was a dance that spoke of tradition, of heritage, and of people deeply rooted in their culture. Bridging the gap between our worlds through the universal language of movement and music, the energy of the dance was filling the air with a sense of unity and belonging. The memories of our day with the Hadzabi, from hunting to sharing meals through negotiations to these traditional dances, would forever be etched in our hearts. Oh, <laughs> my
Our departure was bittersweet, a reminder of the beauty and resilience of the human spirit and the richness of the world's cultures. The Hadzabi had opened their hearts and their way of life to us. And as we left, we carried with us not only the memories we had acquired, but the profound lessons of the humility, gratitude, and the enduring power of the cultural exchange. <laughs> 